Good morning. Hi. We have a naughty Rusel here. Because look at what Naughty Rusel did. Naughty. <laughs> naughty. Naughty Rusel. 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 Oh. Yeah. Rusel. Yeah. yeah. You are allowed to do everything. Yeah. Of course. You are allowed to do everything. But what is this? Oh. What did you do here? And where did you get that from? Oh, for us? Oh, thank you, Rosely. <laughs> Dogs are so funny. Guys, it's time to wear the Christmas sweater. Yeah, I just wanted to... Um, I think we need to say some words because it's the last day. Um, I have some tears in my eyes. Uh, also, I think it's time for me to go to the hairdresser. Fun fact, yesterday when I had my therapy session, I told my therapist that I am wearing the same thing every single day and that I don't put effort into like my makeup and my hair and I'm still wearing the same thing. She was like, Xenia, you need to change your... It makes sense. But, you know, it takes... A village. No, it just takes some time. But at least I put on an eyeliner. Mm. I haven't had an eyeliner in a very long time. Very beautiful. I mean, I mean, disregard the hair and makeup in Miami. But like, I personally, I used to wear eyeliner for like, literally I started when I was 13 and I never took it off. Like, I would never go out without eyeliner. For me, I did not exist without an eyeliner. So the last three years, like basically 95% of the time I wasn't wearing eyeliner. Um, I just love a bare face, but I also think it's time to put on a little bit more effort. And because it's the 24th, I am going to gift you <laughs> the most requested video, which is a hair tutorial, which comes fitting because look at this, look at this. But before we continue, my team and I thought that it would be really nice if we answer questions from the team. So, number one, whose voice would you like to have narrate your biography? Me, my biography? Well, both. For me, it's so obvious, you guys know it already. Doesn't... <laughs> I think I even know it. Uh, of course. Even my boyfriend of 12 years knows it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah. Do you want him? <laughs> no, for you. No, I think it would be epic for you. Yeah. No, I know what it is for you, of course. It's Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is it for you? I think Taylor Swift, I would like. Oh, man. And don't steal my people. <laughs> no, I think Matthew has a, actually a cool voice. I would like Matthew. Yeah, he has a really cool voice. The way he tells stories is just so cool. Imagine Beyonce would do yours. <laughs> but I feel like it wouldn't fit. I feel like Taylor would really fit, you know? Um, and if not Taylor, maybe Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> That's funny, actually. But who has like a really, really cool voice? Oh, like I, know. I know. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Guys, I know. J-Lo. Oh, yeah. She is so cool. That's also cool. Yeah. Olivia Wilde. I love her. Like, I want to be Olivia Wilde when I'm older. I'm thinking of, like, for me, for because I want, like, a real, like, a... <laughs> Robert De Niro. Anyway, yeah. we have a lot of questions, okay, so let's sorry. move on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. You would have to live inside a book for the rest of your life. Which one would you choose? Narnia. Sophie's world. I love Narnia. What happens in Narnia, Jürgen? It's like, uh, there, there's these kids, like group of kids, and there's this magic, not a magic, but like a closet. Mm -hmm. And they go in, and in the closet, there's a door to the okay. hidden okay. world of Narnia. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> do you think I don't know the freaking story or what? So what happens then? Then he becomes the king. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I would live in Sophie's world. It was a book that I read. What happens in Sophie's world? <laughs> it's basically a philosophy, like, it's kind of like a documentary book. I mean, not really, but it documents the different times and directions of philosophy. And I How read does it, it do it? By giving Sophie a teacher who writes letters to her and... Seems like someone read the summary <laughs> on Wikipedia. <laughs> I actually reread it in 2020, but I reread it throughout my whole life. And I first read it when I was like 12 or something, like really young. And I barely got it, but I already loved it. So I kept reading it like a few years later, a few years later. And it's probably the book I read the most in my life. And every time you learn something new. So 
I love the world they create. What are the biggest takeaways from the last 24 days of lockdown? I think, first of all, it's very rewarding in a way. Yeah, Especially putting out something out every day is like somehow very rewarding, but also very challenging. Yeah, but in the end, like for example, throughout a lot of videos, I mentioned that I'm not like super happy with how I did the videos, because you know, I'm very critical of myself. But in the end, I'm so proud that we did it. And it's better, like if you look back at this month, it's better that we did it than if we wouldn't have done it. Yeah, true. Like But no yeah. matter how challenging it is. Behind the scenes, it definitely caused some stress. Yeah, especially the uploading part. Like yeah, that true. was so stressful. Like in Milan, we didn't have internet in our room. Oh my God. We did not have internet in our room. How is that even possible? And I said to Jürgen, I'm like, this is actually a good thing. Like we could use it to our advantage <laughs> where we just say, okay, in our room, we just don't work. But in reality, it's just no. not working, especially with uploading every day yeah. and then in Sometimes, Miami, the oh, upload yeah. speed was so slow. So bad. And that's the most stressful part. And also sometimes my phone wouldn't work. And then I sent the wrong files. Also, we sent the files in so many different ways. Yeah. I mean, this is all very technical. We tried a lot, but that's why I call it like my YouTube bootcamp. Now I learned so much that I'm prepared for like the next years on YouTube because we don't want to go anywhere, right? Yeah. And what I really appreciated is actually this. I feel like we built a small community or like people who, who have been really following the vlog mess. And it's so nice to read those comments. Yeah, guys, and we love you a lot. And just this morning I was like answering comments and I'm like, This is really, like, it just shows that the size of community doesn't matter. It's the quality that matters. And I'm so grateful for all your thoughts and comments and so many people who I relate to and you relate with us. Also lots of people who also are obsessed with Bluetooth boxes. <laughs> <laughs> boxes, I say boxes, it's speakers, I think. No? Yeah. If you had three questions you could ask Ru and understand her answer, what would you... What would they be? I want to know what the hell she's thinking. Yeah, but you only have three. Yeah, I want to know, what are you thinking? So first of all, I want to know, why do you only want to lay at the feet? Yeah, and I never cover. Same! She only, like at night, she only lays by the feet or like between the legs, but never on the... And if you want to pull her up, below. No. she's... No uh, chance. Yeah, she's gone immediately. <laughs> There's nothing that she hates more than being close to your body. Only the feet and legs are okay. But then she's always coming there. And like, if you make a small, like a... Like a little... Like a little spoon for her. Yeah. Then she's so happy. And third question. I want to know if she's happy. No. But I think she is. I hope so. And what's her favorite game? What color is your life right now and why? That's an interesting one. What color is it? I feel like it's... That is so hard to answer. Okay, mine is burgundy because it's really beautiful, but also a little bit dark. <laughs> Or not dark, just like a little bit heavy. I uh, mine, I want something that is kind of like the the color before sunrise. Well, how do you call it? Because I feel like we oh, went through the night. Again, with the deep answer, I love that. It's coming up. Like blue I'm, hour, but yeah, in the morning. Like, is it dawn? We're about dusk to shine. To is it dusk or dawn? Dusk. From dusk to dawn, so it's dusk. Yeah, so it's purple dusk. Oh, beautiful. I love that. If you could know one thing about everyone, what would the question be? <laughs> Who hurt <heard> you? <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, actually, who hurt you? I feel like there's so little we know about other people. And like, even when I look at the people who have upset me this year, and it's been quite a lot of people who have upset me. And I try to look at them from a compassionate point of view where I'm like, my mom always says, try to picture them as like small kids. And then I try to picture them in their human side and how they were hurt. Like, I don't know. I feel like everybody fucks everybody up in one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if we knew about everybody, how it is to walk in their shoes, we would all be more understanding and compassionate instead of just saying, this person is a bully. You know what I mean? But who knows? Maybe there are also just really like, bad people out there, which I don't want to believe, but maybe that's the truth. What's your favorite word? Mine is schlub up. <laughs> Ruzi. <laughs> schlub up means when Ruzel is schlubbering. Like, <laughs> 
If you change one thing in the human experience, what would it be? Okay, I'm like a very like idealistic person, which is my Aquarius in me. And I just wish everybody would be doing well. Everybody would be healthy. Everybody would be happy. And I'm not even sure if this is a desirable world because a natural human experience is always dualistic. Like you cannot have happiness without the sadness. It's like two sides from the same coin. So I don't even know if it's a desirable outcome because things cannot just be good and they cannot just be this and that. But I wish that more people would live in comfort. So I heard this thing which you just reminded me of, which is that with the current development of technology and like the efficiency of AI, robots, blah, 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 we will enter the feeling economy because all the work is being taken over by like machines basically mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. the line maybe also not all work but like uh, that opens up the possibility of just focusing on how you feel for everyone do you think that is but in what sense because if we only go by feeling that's not a good yeah. thing unless it's weird no i think it's gonna be more like an artistic community but for me it's so hard to picture what the ideal world will look like because of the paradox that it's not good if things are just good yeah and also as a human you wanna i think you want to work and of course you want to be fulfilled etc but i think you also need kind of like a task yeah but i think the ultimate goal is always self-expression so instead Instead of people doing mundane tasks, which will be taken over by machines eventually, maybe humans will work on creating or, or express themselves the most by some form of art. I don't know. Oh, it's so interesting to think about the future. I think there are experiences in life that really show you, like for example, they say grief is the cost of love. So that's an experience that feels more meaningful than just becoming a victim of something terrible. So I hope that these like pointless experiences will become less and the meaningful negative experiences will teach us lessons about love i don't know um favorite childhood disney movie i know it's frozen right now but back then <laughs> You know what? I did not really watch Disney movies back then. I was a Sailor Moon girl. I lived for Sailor Moon. Like, I kind of want to find Sailor Moon. And Kickers. I love Kickers. I love, like, Sailor Moon was my number one I and Kickers was, was my number two. I know that Sailor Moon is like an international, I mean, Kickers probably too, but was it called Kickers in your country as well? I'm curious, actually, if you know what we mean. I want to see, <laughs> like, with, with, what's the character? I don't know. Tsubasa. Jürgen, I'm still in my Sailor Moon. <laughs> like movie but I wish that I could rewatch it and see how it makes me feel because I feel like I would have so many throwback memories how they run around the curve no the how they change <laughs> how they oh Jürgen I'm still in Sailor Moon don't distract me no but you know when they um, become the powerful version of themselves oh my god I'm obsessed yeah, I never watched it but like how they run around the curve of the world when they are dribbling the ball <laughs> and then they do like this thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's always spinning. <laughs> but also, guys, I never forget when I watch Pokemon in the movies. And I literally, like, you when cried. Mew... I cried, like, I literally... When Mewtwo died? Yeah. Oh, my God. Spoiler alert. I literally... Hope you guys have watched it already. <laughs> I could not bear it. Okay. But some... Also, thanks for asking me what my favorite Disney movie is. I mean, you kind of said we just have to hurry a little okay, bit. Okay, mine was Dog and the Hound. I think it's called Cup and Kappa. Oh, I don't know that. What's something about yourself you find hard to understand? Why I'm sometimes not doing the things I'm supposed to do. <laughs> That's a universal human experience. Okay, would love to understand that. <laughs> there's a lot of things I don't understand about me, but I think because there's always this like tug and war between my subconscious and my rational brain. And that's why as a highly intuitive person, I have very strong, like I feel very drawn towards certain things. And then my rational brain is trying to control that like big tiger inside of me and i think sometimes i don't understand where my journey is going and i need to like lean into my subconscious more because i have a very very strong intuition and i always say that i'm very close to source 
But yeah, I feel like I also try to rationalize a lot of things that I cannot rationalize. Here, imagine you have that autobiography happening, which Taylor Swift song plays during the end credits. Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods yet? Actually, are we out of the woods is so good because there's a line that says... Na, 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 na. Wait, it says... So it must be a movie or what do you mean? I don't understand. Yeah, didn't she say? No, it's just like a, an audio book. Oh, one line and that song is... Remember when you hit the brakes too soon. <laughs> Here, remember when we couldn't take the heat, I walked out, I said I'm setting you free, but the monsters turned out to be just trees. When the sun came up, you were looking at me. The monsters turned out to be just trees. I love that. What about you? <laughs> Why does it have to be a Taylor song in my... <laughs> yeah, and don't pretend that you don't like her. Well, no, but like, uh, mine is bad blood. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Who's your know. Katy Perry? It's just like a little bit more energetic. Lol. Funniest moment you've ever shared with a stranger. There must be for sure something, but I don't have anything in mind right now. Okay, I have one which is semi-funny, but um, semi-scary. So once we were flying to Portugal and it was with your family. So we did family vacation. It was like five years ago or something. For some reason we couldn't sit together and I was sitting next to like a woman. Not my mom. No, like I didn't know her and she was very like present. <laughs> And everything was fine, like she wasn't annoying or anything, but I like noticed her. And then when we were landing, the turbulences were so insane. Like we all, I mean not all, but like uh, my row, we thought we were gonna die. Like it was so scary because it was like, you know, these like holes in the air. And then this woman <laughs> takes my hand. <laughs> And then once it was over, she took it away and was like super awkward. It's like literally from a movie. I mean, it actually happened, but it's like a movie scene where we're they both like back to normal and we're just being super awkward. And, and they start dating. <laughs> no, I bet it was so <laughs> lol. Very funny. One more. What's the characteristic about yourself you would love to be known for? I think if you are a good entertainer, that's always good. <laughs> people love to be around people who are funny. No? Yeah. I want to be known for my goodness. I love goodness. And I want to be a good person. <laughs> okay, now I look so self... Uh... No. No, not at all. Uh, I uh... think I'm more self-concerned because I want to be a good person and you actually want to entertain people. <laughs> but I love goodness. Like, I want to be such a good person and that's why I always strive to get better because sometimes it's not so easy, you know? All right. Okay, guys. We love you. You're getting the hair tutorial today because I'm washing my hair. See ya. Bye. I just washed my hair with the shampoo that's in the hotel and the conditioner. And now I'm gonna put in, I like this product because it smells so good. Okay, so, so one tip that I have is to let your hair towel dry for a little bit, but not too long. You're like, great, that's helpful. I think I left it for like 30 minutes. I think that's the sweet spot because you want it a little bit dry, but not too much. And not too little because if it's too little, it just takes forever. And then, of course, we have a Dyson. <laughs> Big surprise. Okay, and this is the um, add-on that I use. It's the only one for now. Okay, so I start with my front piece and I wrap it around the Dyson and I go back and forth so that it doesn't burn my hair and I still get the curl in a very fast way. And I continue this with the top layer of my right side. So it really helps when you have layers in your hair because this way the curls and the hairstyle will just become much more voluminous. <laughs> and then I go towards the inner part of my hair and I do it kind of in a random way so I don't have a strict way of doing it because I think if you do it in a random way the curls will look more natural. 
So I just take random pieces here and there and I go back and forth. I use my brush if the hair is still really wet and it's hard to separate it. So it's hard to make a nice curl. And I repeat and repeat and repeat. I do the right side first. So I once had a technique where I did both sides at the same time, but then it gets too messy. Like random is good, but not too random. And then I do the same thing on the left side. So I start with my left front curl, kind of like my bangs. They're not really bangs, but you know what I'm saying. And then I do the rest of the top layer. I go further down and you can see that it's forming. Like the, the hairstyle is coming to fruition. And then I have a lot of volume. Ooh, I'm hot. <laughs> now I have this and I'm gonna do this. And I will brush through it with my hair. Okay, and now I don't know if I would recommend you the next step, it really depends on your hair. But I'm gonna slightly brush through it. And then I will do another quick round on the like um, top layer. And then I do a second round. So I do the same thing, but with the top layer. bit of like hair oil just because it smells so good and also because it's like crazy voluminous so it will tone it down a little bit and make it a bit shiny getting emotional Me too. we're driving home for christmas and it's been so nice with you <laughs> but we see them i know next week we don't even see them we don't even know we what see you, you guys look. we don't even know what you look like i talked about parasocial relationships yesterday it's really interesting because you know us and it's likely we don't know you so that's a bit of strange, but we, we love you anyway. Jürgen, your hair looks so good. Nah, you told me you would bring me to the hairdresser. <laughs> you didn't. No, but honestly, thank you so much for watching along and coming along. And I'm just so grateful that you were here. From the beginning. Yeah, especially the people that I keep recognizing in the comments. I love you guys so much. And everybody who's been watching and like engaging. And I'm very, 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 very happy and grateful that we found our little tribe. And I wish you guys the best, 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 most beautiful holidays. Stay well, stay safe, stay healthy, stay beautiful, kind. And see you next week. Have fun. Yeah, you should also have fun. Yeah, right. No New Year's <laughs> wishes, right? No, Not yet. Because they're still... You will see us next Thursday. Yay. Oh. Never stops. But I'm so glad it doesn't stop because I would really miss it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.